week. Pretty simple anyway. We'll just be, yeah. So there you go. You've got mate, seven. Yeah, cool. Do you know how to turn a lighter in your ass, mate? Are you saving electricity? <laughs> mate, you never know. <laughs> mate, we're... I was trying to work out the lighting before, and I was like, what works better? This is all right. Yeah, no, no. It, it looks like you're in the dark ages, but go with it. I'm going, that's the look I'm going for. <laughs> Um, all right, we've got nine coming on so far, so we'll just, um, yeah, obviously it's still only two to seven, so we'll just give it a few minutes and, um, and go from there. Can, no they see, can they see us in that? We, um, I'm we've, we, we've been um, on our, uh, today we're all testing it, or we're chatting to everyone, and uh, no, they must be just banked up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Total one point. Yeah, so, it's all live now anyway, so be on your best behaviour, Caitlin and Dave. Awesome. Like, I know. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so funny. Hey, how many funny memes have been coming out about Zoom meetings and stuff on yeah. Instagram and that? Riley, hilarious. don't even start. <laughs> <laughs> Attendees, yeah, here um, we go. Katie said Alicia, I can't the one that um that you ta I tagged you in the other day anyway that I saw on your page Dave, so <laughs> um Oh, this is awesome. I was going to say hello to everyone. How can you say hello to everyone, Dave? Uh, you just go in the chat box and I oh, change yeah. it to the panelists and attendees. Hello, everyone. Everyone. In got Cherry, Lucinda, Rebecca, Avalon, Andrew, Alicia, mobile number. Someone's ringing in, Lucinda. Here we go. Perfect. Um, yeah, so guys, we'll still just wait around. It's only you know, still a minute to seven at the moment, so we'll just um, yeah wait around for a couple of minutes and see what sort of comes up from there before we kick off. Oh. We're gonna uh, run gosh. some um, preview preview um, ads. <laughs> yeah, we should run through. Katie, can you dance or something? Yeah, I'm starting to actually dance for everyone. <laughs> no, we want people I'm to stay. Not see me dance. <laughs> I'm more yeah. than happy to. Oh, there you go. Hello. How are you? <laughs> oh, good How about that, Yeah. This is uh, the uh, the wonders of working from home as of today. Yeah, exactly. So you guys obviously went. Your whole office has gone that way, Matt. Or yeah, we closed the office down this afternoon uh, indefinitely. Yeah. Mm. Everyone will be working from home as of tomorrow. Yeah. And obviously, you've got all your systems and everything in place for that anyway. You've... Yep, we spent probably a week and a half getting ready, tested, good to go. So it wasn't a, uh, when we made the call this morning, it wasn't going to be a surprise. Yeah, yeah. Um, and how did everyone take that? They're appreciative of that probably at the moment or? Yeah, no, I think that they really uh, appreciate things. Oh, you're all right, mate? <laughs> um, no, I think they're appreciative of uh, the process we've taken, to be honest, and being always up front and open communication, which will be no different to what I'll talk to our um, attendees about today. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, we'll just give it another minute or so and um, then we'll get into it. So I think it's bang on seven for what I've got, or 701. Um, you're going to help your dad talk a bit of sense tonight? Can everyone see right. my, um, what I'm writing here? Not going to see anything you're wrong. All right, cool. Yep, yep, yeah, I can. Yeah, cool. Thanks, Av. Shout out to Av. She's yeah, been a guinea pig all afternoon. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, what do you reckon? We start kicking it off? Is, are you going to record this right there? Yep. Yeah, can you? Yeah. Yeah, so if anyone's listening, if you've got any issues with that let me know but um, um, yeah I think it'd be a good thing to be able to sort of spread across the people that can't make it anyway too so um, but what we're doing at the moment is we'll probably look to have everyone on mute at this stage um, we, you can chime in with any questions that you've got through tops anyway we want to make it short sharp and sweet and just get to the get to the I guess juicy points and um, we can get a bit of um, bit of info out of it anyway um, but with the Q&A type set up, yeah, just chime in if you, if you can write in that Q&A section. 
Um, so just pop in there any questions and Katie will be able to manage that for us as well and we'll answer those as you go. Um, even just address who you, who you want that sort of question to um, and we'll go from there. So yeah, what we're going to do, um, Katie and myself, we're just going to go through a little bit of a, a wrap up on what, how we're seeing things in the market at the moment um, and some hints and tips on, uh, for both business owners and people looking for work at the moment. Um, so, and then from there, we've got Matt Carpenter from Navigate Advisors. Uh, we've been working with Matt for, or since we started the business. He's been absolutely brilliant. Um, we cannot fault them. Um, so there's a bit of a plug for Matt, but yeah, he has been Thanks fantastic. Well. Um, and yeah, you'll get a lot of info out of him. And we first met Dave Powtabane. Um, a couple of little pow! There you go, Dave. You like that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so we met Dave a couple of years ago and he's been popping into the office ever since. Um, He's got a 30-day challenge business and he does a lot of public speaking um, and a lot of other sort of, I guess, side hustles and things like that as well. But he's just got loads of energy and motivation. He's, um, he knows a lot about mindfulness and exercise, nutrition. So hopefully you can get a lot out of him in these times as well while everyone is, um, I guess, in that isolation type mode. So, um, all right. So just to kick off, um, yeah, so a bit of an update on the market anyway. The last... Two weeks ago, things were sort of fairly, I guess, um, steady. Um, so there were still people looking to recruit and we were talking to a lot of, lot of businesses and things were coming on and we were filling a lot of, lot of roles. The last week, um, inquiries sort of, I guess, come to a bit of a standstill, I guess. Um, we've still got a couple of businesses anyway that we are working with. We just put an accounts officer role on today. So there's still a certain amount of confidence out there in the market. Um, but I guess a lot of the businesses that we are looking to, I'm just getting my notes here at the moment. Um, yeah, so a lot, of, a lot of businesses that we're talking to are asking the one question is, is it a good time to recruit? Um, so we had this discussion even with Matt not long ago as well. And it just depends on your level of confidence, I think, to start with. If you, um, if you know that your product and service is going to still do right in these times or in the next few months as well, and you've got plans in place, well, still go ahead, no, no problems at all. We're happy to, to do it. Um, and like I said, we've still got a handful of clients that are doing that. But another on, on the flip side, there's been a handful of clients as well that have said, look, what would you do in these times? And we've been, I guess, it's not good for our business at the moment, but we've been telling them to probably just hold off for this next week to two weeks anyway, until we all get a little, little bit more certainty from the government um, to know exactly where we're at from there. But um, look, it's still potentially, like we've got a lot of clients that have paid engagement fees that are still calling us, still talking to us. And I think this is the time where you really can um, start planning for, like what is your contingency plan once the market does turn again in the next, well, who knows, it could be a month, could be six weeks, could be two months, but you've got to be ready. So sing out to us at the, and we can help talk you through that potential planning um, because it will be extremely competitive um, in a business sense anyway, once it does turn. There's going to be a, a hell of a lot of businesses out there looking to recruit at the same time, um, where if you can reach out to us, we can start putting all their marketing um, campaigns I guess, in place and start to work on them um, before that. It is a, it's a really good way to go. Um, and again, guys, chime in with any questions at all throughout the, throughout the time. I know I'm talking a lot. Um, so We're up to 17 anyway. attendees. So good stuff, guys. Keep Ooh. them coming. Oh, perfect. Um, now, apart from that as well, we've had the question from candidates too. Um, so obviously some people are, are being laid off, which is, yeah, which is terrible. And, and you know, your heart goes out to you and your family. And, and um, so we're here to provide any advice, any assistance we can. You can call us at any time. We're happy to help out as much as we can. But yeah, people are still asking us, is it a good time to apply for new roles? I think the short answer for that is, um, I'd say yes. If the, if the businesses are confident enough to go out there and be looking to recruit, um, I don't have a problem with you obviously applying for roles and whatnot. Um, but um, yeah, so that's, that's really where we're at at the moment. I think if you're still looking, looking for work, obviously throw your hat in the ring. Um, but yeah, obviously, yeah, give us a call after this over the, over the next coming weeks and we can still give you updates on where we're at. But we are still seeing businesses recruit. So, um, you know, if they're confident, we're confident as well. And we're talking through them before we even go to market. We're not going to recruit roles where we think it might be a, a start and stop type setup where you're in there for a few weeks and then off you go. Um, but obviously, there's still a certain risk to everything you do. So, um, so yeah, that's where we're at, I think, with the market at the moment. But... 
it will change, I think, from day to day anyway. Um, yeah, so that's where we're at with that at the moment. But look, I'll throw it over to young Caitlin now, um, who's just got a little bit to say as well. Everyone, now you can tell that I'm the personality out of us two. <laughs> <laughs> <Everyone's laughs> <time in. laughs> I encourage you that. <laughs> so obviously, we just wanted to touch on um, employees. Um, if you have, if you are an employer and have employees working from home, we'd suggest um, to hop online and, and use an online um, induction. Um, and workplace assessment called Workro and another one's called Work for Induct and they're all in one onboarding platforms. Um, Workro have a great one at the moment and it's working from home safely. So that's a learning module as well as, as, well as a self-evaluation checklist. So we'll just have Claire Bain come in. Claire, we'll just, um, we'll start to answer questions at the end. So thanks for throwing one, that one out there. Um, and I guess, if you are working from home, structure your days like you are at work. I know that I have two young children myself and trying to be a mum and manage work at home, it, is, it can be difficult. Um, so a few hints and tips there is obviously if you, if you can get up that little bit earlier and, and smash out as much work as you can when they are um, asleep in the morning between, you know, six or seven or five or six, um, and maybe even half an hour of a night time. Even set them up with activities during the day. I have a three-year-old who is an absolute maniac, um, and I still got a little bit thing, a little bit done today, just even setting up a few activities around the house. Um, I, I think with team communication, um, there's a few different team apps that you can um, utilize. One called um, Microsoft Teams. Um, so guys, write these down if you can. Uh, Microsoft Teams, Slack, Clock's another good one that has some great audio and video calling features and Twist. Um, but just a few things like you can keep up the staff morale is just have those virtual coffee catch-ups in the morning like you would at work. Um, if you can FaceTime um, your other colleagues in the morning and just see how they're how they're going and how the self isolation is going. Um, I think just creating that that little bit of banter between um, colleagues is really important. Um, and I guess setting a few goals and targets for yourself during the day if you are working from home, just to um, make sure that you are still being productive. Definitely. Um, all right, very good. Well, back to Mr. Personality. Um, now, just to give you, I guess, use this time as well. If you, if you are at home and whatnot, and, and even if you find yourself to be out of work, um, use this time to be proactive. Get like, it's like your CV, your LinkedIn, and your social media pages are your number one marketing document throughout your whole life, basically, as well. So, if you can build that personal brand, um, it, it will put you in good stead to, to find employment once again, anyway. So, straight away, if you, if you need help with LinkedIn, that's something we utilise day in, day out. So sing out, we're happy to look through your profile and give you some hints and tips. Um, even get through your latest CV as well. We can have a good look through that. We can look at having discussions over the phone with you on, um, I guess, the best way to, to make sure that is absolutely Mickey Mouse. Um, but even up, like update your seek profile if you have one. Make sure your current CV is on there. Um, but even LinkedIn have a section as well, which I can guide you through later on too to as well. But um, on uh, it's open for new open for opportunities so it allows recruiters like yourselves and especially if you're in the city as well where there are loads of um, I guess recruiters it allows them to be able to see that you are looking to engage with the recruiter um, in saying that as well if you've got an internal recruiter they can't actually see that you are looking to so there's still a level of privacy there um, and no one ex externally can see that too so um, I think that is a yeah, there are. There's just some good opportunities there to make sure that LinkedIn profile is absolutely bang on because it is the way of the future. Um, even look at, like you've got obviously all the time in the world on your hands, so make sure that your, your headshot on LinkedIn is really good. So make sure you put a little bit of a smile on your face. I know it's hard for Katie and Carpo most of the time. Um, but yeah, get, like, use that, dress up while you're at home and play around with it, get like sneak out into the garden or whatever as well and just take some different shots that every, like, you know, just see what you can come up with. But it is time. What have you been doing today, Riley? Oh, well, yeah, that's what Riley's been doing. I'm trying the beard, so I don't, yeah, anyway. Well, I could change it tomorrow. Um, <laughs> I could go like Dave and get the peroxide out too. I've been considering that. <laughs> I don't want that look. 
New day, new me. I'll be there you too. So. What a time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like, um, in all seriousness, they make sure that that photo is, that's a first impression. So make sure that is, um, it's professional. You, you are smiling in it. People like to see that anyway. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, I think, yeah, whilst you're in this bit of a downtime as well, just make sure that CV is 100% right. Um, yes, Lucinda, I, I realise it is, um, what is it, March? Jeez. I was going to shave it before the wedding, but that's been canned in April. So anyway, back to square one. Um, um, but yeah, so, so yeah, like I said, make sure that your CV and your LinkedIn are up to date. So you're ready to go once uh, one things do turn anyway. Um, if you're a business owner, a few, um, I guess, little bits of, of advice. I think this is, if you're, a, like, if you're a leader or a business owner, even if you're an employee, it's time to show your leadership skills. It's time to be calm and relaxed and filter that through your team. I'll keep on banging on the last few days that calm is contagious and it is true. Um, I think this is your chance to show them how you handle yourself in times of stress and uncertainty. And they will remember this. Once, we're, once they're through this, they'll be like, wow, such and such, whoever, whoever you are, how you handled yourself, you will. It'll, it'll show you true colours. And people. It, it's either going to be people will stick to that and they'll appreciate it and it'll create even more loyalty in your business. Or they'll go, geez, they did not have a clue here. They didn't handle the situation well at all. We had no uncertainty. Um, yeah, there was no trust there involved. There was no transparency about what's happening. And yeah, you're a big chance of having, uh, I guess, a, a lot of people look to leave your company once the market strengthens again. So be a leader, R research, read, find out what you need to do. Um, just, but just be honest and transparent with people. Make sure you're on the phone to them all. Or like Matt was talking about earlier, having a, a full meeting with your team and, and you know, planning that over the last week about what they're going to do in this situation. If, you, if you're not planning or you haven't, yeah, it's going to be extremely tough. Um, so work on your social media plan as much as possible as well. So look to... Uh, my suggestion anyway would be not to put out any other content apart from what is current at the moment. Um, people probably don't want to see that anyway, so keep it current to what's happening. Keep it, um, I guess, thoughtful for what people are going through at the moment. Um, and, yeah, so that, I think that's probably a, a good thing. But, again, it just allows you to bank up. You look at getting 50 to 100 different sort of social media posts and videos ready to go. So. Once things do turn, you're you are there. You're ready. You're ready to, to rock and roll straight away. Um, which and these are things that we're we're doing ourselves. So I wouldn't spruik unless we're doing it. Um, it. Time to work on all your policies and procedures as well. So things that you've been putting off, where the old saying is you you work in your business and not on it. it it's time to flip that around. Use all this time that you've got to, to actually do that to make sure your your processes and whatnot are a hundred percent bang on. Um, and what Matt's doing as well, use it as family time. All this time where you've been sitting in the office for eight to 10, 12 hours, look, yeah, enjoy it. Like truly just, just enjoy this time. This is the world, I think, giving us all a bit of a break. Um, yeah, I just so wanted to touch in there, sorry, with um, you know, your policies and procedures. It's actually a great time to even work out your policies and procedures from, for your employees working from home and, and what that looks like. Yeah, for sure. Um, and lastly, I think is to look, speak to your accountant. Like I've been leaning on Matt really heavily the last week and a half. Um, and like I said before, he's always been fantastic. He always gets back to us ASAP. Um, he's always extremely knowledgeable, and it has it, it's helped us to remain calm and, and work out exactly where we need what we need to do and where we need to be financially. Um, he's helped us, or we will be helping us tap into different subsidies, um, different obvious tax write-offs, and what you can do, but. This is, again, a good time to see what their communication style is like with your accountant and your other external stakeholders as well. Because um, it, will, it will bring out their true colours. And if the, and if the communication is not there and you're constantly chasing them for information and you're not getting exactly what you need, well, maybe it's time to change it up. But you'll soon realise in times like this where the support is. And like I said, and it's not a huge, it's not a big marketing thing for Matt, but he, they have, especially Matt himself, they've been... They've been fantastic, so um, I cannot fault them. It has us helped Katie and I just you know, keep things on track and work out what our plan is moving forward financially. Um, all right, I've got a sore throat already. Don't worry, I'm virtual. 
Um, <laughs> Do you want me to? I'll I'll finish off before we um we throw it over to Dave and Matt. So um so next week, guys, I have been speaking to a, a WHS consultant, and he has some great info that I will create a video around. So keep an eye out for that. Um, like Riley mentioned, we are continuing to offer um, any advice on your LinkedIn profile and your CV. So please reach out if, if you are looking for work. We are more than happy to support you and, and get you through this time. Um, I guess I was uh, reading a, a blog last night and um, I think it was Janine Alice and she mentioned, I guess in, in these times we have to relax because fast and soon again we'll be busy and um, and there's more to life than being busy. So let's take this chance, like Riley said, and as you saw Matt in there with his little girl, um, spend time with your family. Um, I know I get caught up and get overwhelmed with whatever I have on and, and lose sight and and it's a good time to spend time with your kids and, and spend that quality time while you can. Um, you know, have a sleep in. I had a nice sleep in this morning. Thanks, Riley. <laughs> what's what's different there? Nothing's changed. How <laughs> <laughs> 5 a.m. girl. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. read a book, learn meditation, do online yoga. I saw um, Beck Layton here. Um, she's having a day. And um, she's she's running um, yoga lessons online, so you know, reach out to her and um, do some yoga lessons there. Um, do some. Yeah, I saw Dave, sorry, sorry to, I didn't quickly. I saw like a post I think Dave put up there it might have been last week as well, but about not being too proud. I'm sure it was you, Dave, maybe, but yeah, 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 yeah about be, in these tough times. Yeah. 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 Be you need to be vulnerable. You need to reach out to your network if you're looking for work and don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't be afraid to, to call your friends and your family, let them know if you are struggling with anything as well. If we're all we're all in the same boat. So let's help each other out. Let's just be hundred percent vulnerable and yeah. honest with hey, you're, what's happening. You're reading you're reading my notes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've hacked your system. There you are. <laughs> Sorry, no, Sorry Dave is finished, so now we'll go to Matt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, and the last thing I wanted to say, guys, was I know that a lot of people are feeling um, quite powerless in this climate. Um, but I guess don't, don't give your power away to whatever's going on in the media. So I, I would strongly suggest your exposure to the news and socials. And if you are... Um, wanting updates, use reliable courses and probably limit that to about half an hour a day. Yeah, exactly. Now, just quickly before we go on, just to look at a couple of the questions on the recruitment aspect. Um, hopefully everyone can read them as well, but the impact on life business is pretty casual. Uh, the peak season at like supermarkets and they're obviously, there may be layoffs after this, so that a further impact on the economy of recruiting. Yes, that may happen as well. And obviously it's still, it's great that they're, they're giving this opportunity for more casuals to come on. So we can't knock them for that. Um, so there's, there are, you know, that, that, I think that's a positive thing anyway, but like with anything, there will be a peak in the crop, I think as well. So some of those people, you know, once things settle down, obviously will be, will be laid off. But I think at the moment, as long as people are getting any sort of work, it's better than nothing. Um, but, yeah, obviously there will be an influx in, of candidates coming onto the market after things die down as well. Um, so it, it will impact, I guess, recruitment and that competitiveness for candidates. Um, but in, on, to turn that as well, there's opportunity. People can go in and really prove themselves as well and show that they're an amazing employee, they're really loyal, they turn up on time, they smash through the work, they do everything that's required. But you're a big chance of coming out of it as well and people going, we never would have given you an actual even a start of this role as well. And now you've proven yourself, yeah, we're going to line you up something for when we get better. Um, so that, that would be my take on that. Um, I think uh, listening to the like tools and skills to lead, um, I think even Dave will probably be able to touch on that a little bit as well um, when he talks, just about you know, how to create that, that calmness in volatile situations as well. But it is using all the different tools that you have, all these different breathing techniques. Um, just to, to calm yourself down in those situations as they come up. But um, apart from that, reading, there's a lot of online sort of resources better than blogs and probably webinars about that. Um, so that's what I'd sort of suggest with that anyway at the moment. Um, but yeah, guys, keep, keep chiming in with questions. But um, you're all sweet, Katie. We'll palm it off to Matt from Navigate. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Riley. Thanks, Katie. Um, I think the first thing I'd like to say is, um, yeah, I've 
Uh, we've worked with Riley and Katie for a long time, but Riley is an active member of our business community, a uh, board member of the business chamber, and, and for him to think of putting this up as an initiative and helping out our our business community it should be commended. So, uh, so well done, mate. I think this is uh, awesome and probably one of a few that we need to do over the next few weeks because um, things are going to get tougher before they get easier. Um, look, I thought I'd uh, do a few things. The first is I'll probably give a little bit of an update on, on what's happening in the local business community. Um, maybe some tips and tricks for businesses out there um, and then cover off a few of the government's um, initiatives um, they've announced over the last few days um, and hopefully cover both those that are business owners and also some for those out there that are employees that are finding it tough because they're um, now looking for work. Mm. Um, yeah, I think um, there's there's no um, times are tough for local businesses and in the reality they're only going to get tougher. Uh, helping um, our businesses that have been heavily uh, impacted from the sort of first two rounds of social distancing, distancing measures and it's highly likely in a couple of days our third round will be will be released. Uh, so have to close their close their doors and, and uh, lay off staff and make some really tough decisions with their teams. Um, but what I think is important is that we're all aware that none of us are immune to this economic impact of, the, of this COVID-19 pandemic. Um, there are businesses out there that are being impacted immediately um, from shutdowns, clearly the uh, hospitality industry, um, the uh, indoor um, social activity venues, um, et cetera. Um, they're the immediate impacts. But over time, this will flow into all businesses um, because you know, those, those people aren't going to be out in the community spending money and that's the impact on us um, in the community. So I think um, what's important, and this is really important, is that the Wagga business community sticks together. We are a strong community um, and uh, there's a lot of hashtags out there, buy local, support local, find everything you can do locally. Um, I think that's really important in the in the next few weeks and months because if we can all work together, um, we'll all get through this the other side. Um, I think for those that are business owners out there, um, you know, we Business owners, um, as much as employees are, and, and no, no, no one's any worse or better off. Everybody is concerned about what's happening, what's the impact, um, how's my business going to go, or if I'm an employee, am I going to lose my job, or I have lost my job, what am I going to do? I think as business owners, it's really imperative that you stay strong, stay healthy, and stay positive, not just for your own mental well-being, but it's so you're a strong leader for your teams because this is the time our teams will need us the most. They're, they're, they're worried. They're concerned. They don't know what's happening and they're looking to us for guidance and support when they feel like everything else around them is coming crashing down. Um, so I think it's really important that own businesses look after yourself. Be strong, be positive and be great leaders and your team will thank you forever. One of the things that we have done for our clients um, this week is we've developed a business continuity plan and, uh, and that's, a, that's something that our clients can, can get from us now. Um, what I thought is there's some probably seven good areas in there that I just want to briefly touch on for those out there that do have businesses. Um, and some of these tips are for employees as well that you can put in place and put in place now. I think the point I'm trying to make here is that it's, it is tough. It's not all doom and gloom. We will, as a business community, come out the other side of this, but we need to take action today. Don't think it's going to happen, not going to happen to you, or don't think we're immune to it. Everybody will be impacted. So put in place today your actions. So the first one I'm going to talk about is cash. Preserve your cash at all costs. Maximise the cash receipts and any benefits you can get from the government stimulus packages. And they, particularly those who are in business, prepare a worst case cash flow for the next 12 months. Know what your bottom line is that you need to generate to be able to cover your fixed overheads. For those that are in business, review your protection strategies. Identify where, where your assets are held. If your home's in held in your family name, put in place, work with your accountant, strategies to protect your assets. This is a really important one with your banks and funding. 
contact your bank now immediately and arrange additional lines of credit if possible. Discuss any loan repayment holidays. All the major banks are out there working with small businesses um, that are allowing you to put on hold um, repayments for up to six months. Um, and the times to act now, not in two weeks, because I can guarantee you when the third round of closures get announced in the next couple of days, which they will, we all know it's going to happen, is that there'll be more and more people going to the bank. So get in front of the line today. Develop a management team and develop a COVID-19 action plan. I can tell you from Navigate's experience, we put a plan in place a week and a half ago. It changes rapidly. It changed even so much as today. I'm not afraid to say, we closed our office down this afternoon. All our staff were working from home, but we had that in place a week and a half ago. Everybody was tested. Everybody can work from home. All IT sorted. We've done uh, work health and safety checks and to make sure it's safe them to work at home. We were ready to go. So when we made the call today, um, in my opinion, to do the right thing where you can work from home and implement that social distancing measures so we can protect the whole community, it wasn't a difficult thing to do today. So get your action plan in place. But more importantly, communicate it with your team. The more you communicate with your team, the more at ease you put them, the more you'll be a leader and the less you'll be reactive. And in regards to the employees, you need to openly discuss your options with your teams. There's no point in beating around the bush. They know what's going on out there in the world. If you're an employee and you don't know what's going on in your business, go and talk to your boss, go and talk to your manager, find out what their plan is, because that will alleviate a lot of the anxiety, the stress in the, in, out there with people. Because yeah, employees are scared and they're gonna be, need to be reassured by us as business leaders. In terms of your customer suppliers, now is the time to have great communication so that customers have peace of mind that it's business as usual. So you need to communicate to your clients. Like we put emails out every day this week. We've had Facebook posts go up. Our clients know that we're business as usual, but they also know that they can't meet with us face to face and we'll do Zoom meetings, phone meetings, uh, all that in place. So they know we're still operating. It's just different. Also go through your customer lists and, I, and talk to those that owe you money. Have a in, yeah, discuss with them. Be sympathetic, be empathy. Know that they may be struggling, but it's best to know that that client can't pay me for a month or that client's going to pay me over three months so you can manage your cash flow. In the final one, and one that Dave had Bain will talk on a lot more than I will, is your mental health. Your mental health is extremely important. It will be stressful. Working from home is not the same as working in the office. We all saw my daughter coming in here before because she just wanted to see what was going on. You, if, if particularly if both you and your partner work from home, you're gonna be working at home, there's gonna be none of that normal break you have, so it's gonna place stress on your relationships, it's gonna place um, stress on, on your work and trying to be as productive as possible. You know, do what it needs to do to be mindful of your mental health. And so that way you are strong for your team members. So they're the sort of tips and tricks that both business owners and employees that are on this, on this session as well, they're the sort of things that you go and talk to your bosses about, go and talk to your managers, ask them these sort of questions. I'm sure everybody you know, would, wouldn't be afraid to tell you, just not every business might know that that's the best thing to do. All right, I thought the final thing that I'd go through is maybe um, talk about some of the government initiatives that are out there. Um, that have been announced, particularly the, the major ones that are announced on Sunday. Um, and what I will say to you, these are ever-changing. Um, and I have no doubt in a few days there will be new measures announced. Um, so get in touch with your account and find out what's best for you. In terms of, um, for those of you who are out there who are employees and may have been casual workers and no longer going to any work or are full-time workers and um, have majorly reduced hours or you've been put on, you know, on, on hold um, and told to use your leave, all those sort of things. Um, clearly, you're going to be concerned about um, where's the money going to come from. So there's probably um, a couple of ones out there straight up that, um, that, that are benefit. The, the problem you're going to have, and, and there's nothing that um, we can do about this, is just a government um, issue, is that more of these things are my gov online, um, go down to Centrelink um, type scenarios. 
Um, and the, the cues, as we've seen on TV, are massive. So there will be a little bit in play there, which is, again, the um, sooner you get onto these things, the sooner you, um, because it's going to be a bit of a wait period. Um, the first one, probably the $550 uh, fortnight supplement. Um, and what that is, is that if you're on a, um, a job seeker payment or a youth allowance payment or a parenting payment or a farm household allowance or a special benefit, so those income supplements, you know, trying to find a job, things that are in place, um, the government have put in this $550 a fortnight supplement to be paid. Um, and what's good in that regards is a normal asset testing or means testing they've got in place, um, they're, they're, um, they're waiving those, so it makes it easier to access, which is good. Um, and but these are only available as long as you're not getting anything else from your employer, all right? So if you're on annual leave, unfortunately, you can't get this. Um, if you've got income protection insurance in place and that's kicked in, you can't get these. But if you've got no, you know, you've, you've, you've got no job, no money coming in, this is the first one that you'd be lining up to your Centrelink. And these are on top of any other um, income support payments that Centrelink would provide. So um, that's a really, really um, good one to be getting on board with. The other one that, um, that's out there are these two $750 tax-free payments. Um, and the first payment is actually being made on the 31st of March. And the second one, which you can hear, is from the 13th of July. And their payments made to primarily um, social security veterans and some of these income support recipients. But um, what's the fine print in that is, is that if you're getting the 550 a fortnight supplement, you don't get this bonus, all right? This is the bonus for, um, think of it as those for pensioners, um, veteran affairs, retirees. Um, that's what this is designed to be around. Yeah. In terms of, um, businesses, there's no silver lining would be the short answer. Um, although the government, and, and, um, and I think, in my opinion, um, whether you're a Labourist or a Liberist, a left or a, or a right, I think the government's doing the best they can. Um, there's no cash um, immediate, let's get, you know, let's help us employ our staff for longer scenarios. Um, they do have, they talk, there's this uh, spruiking in the market about, you know, minimum 20000 up to $100,000 uh, cash payments. Um, it's not <laughs> an immediate cash payment. What they're basically doing is that those of us who are businesses and have employees, you've got that tax money to withhold and, and we declare back to the ATO, in, uh, you know, monthly or quarterly activity statements. What the government's saying is that when you lodge your March activity statement, that um, they're going to take... The pays you go that you withhold from your employees and effectively give you 100% of that back um, as a credit. So, um, use a simple example I'm a quarterly um, withholder and I withhold 10 grand in my, or say 20 grand in my March activity statement. You'll get a credit of that 20,000 with the ATO. And that credit then can be used to pay any of your GST, your ABA ATO, any outstanding debts. And then, if you've got any credit left, then that will be refunded to you. Um, but it's important that it may not immediately be cash to you, but at least it is something that you're not having to pay and it's helping you pay your GST liability. So that, that is good, but um, it's not now. It's sort of um, more mid-April by the time that will be in place. And then the same again um, in June, but it's capped at 50000 So over those March to, to June periods, the maximum rebate you'll get is fifty. But it is good that it's a at least get 10. So as long as you're withholding wages from the employees, you get a minimum 10 grand, up to a maximum of 50. And then as long as you're still in business, and this is the catch, and you're still employing people and you're still lodging activity statements, then you'll also get 100% matched of whatever you got as that rebate in the June and September quarters again. And that's where they talk about this 100 grand. So you could get um, 50 grand in the first round in your March and June, and then turn around in June and September and get it matched again. So um, it's good, it's a great, I think it's a good initiative, but be mindful that it's not just um, cash in your bank, it's gonna to help to pay any of your outstanding other ATO like And Matt, we've had a question come through as well, like is, is now a good time to buy into the stock market? Is that, does that come down to your level of um, risk sort of appetite, I guess? Um, or would you be suggesting yeah, look, to hold on to your cash? Um, 
I'll caveat this by I'm not a financial planner, I'm an accountant, and me giving financial planning advice will send me to jail and I won't go to jail for anyone. Um, so, uh, now. <laughs> so yeah. um, look, that, that, that is a question for financial planner, and we, we are luckily here to navigate have financial planners. So, Lucinda, if you want to give me a bus tomorrow, you can put security to Gavin and, um, and have a chat to him. But I think reality is the market's going down. Um, the real estate market's going down. Um, but my number one advice to anybody is cash is king. Build your cash war chest because if this goes on for months, six to four months, um, you're going to need that cash as your revenue decreases to hopefully keep your team going through as long as you can. And it's important because we all know how difficult it is. We all got quality staff and it's difficult to find new staff. And when the economy rebounds, and it will rebound, and it will mm. rebound hard, um, that um, we're on the front foot. So, and that's where. Um, those COVID-19 plans and working with your teams and being open and honest with them um, is good because part of those honest and open discussions might be is that, you know, um, in weeks to come, you might need to be talking to your teams about reduced hours or um, those sort of things so that everybody works together um, to ensure that the business survives and that everybody has a job at the other end. Mm. Nah, um, and I think probably the... Um, if you're, again, if you're an employer, and particularly those in the construction industry, so the tradies out there, and if you've got um, some apprentices, um, there is some 50% uh, rebate on your apprentice wages capped at 21,000 over nine months, so seven grand every quarter. Uh, so that's good, but you've got to have less than 20 employees. So there's always these catches, but I think it's better than, better than nothing. Mm. And the final one that could provide some immediate benefit um, to businesses if they are looking to um, to ensure they're liquid is the government loan guarantee scheme. And what that is, is that if, if you go to a bank um, and, and apply for the right loan with the bank and they know what loans are under this scheme, and if it's less than three years, it's unsecured and it's less than 250 grand, the government will back at 50%. So that helps the banks because um, reality is a lot of businesses are gonna fly tight to the wire, they're going to be, um, you know, uh, probably more expenditure than income coming in. They're going to be building into their cash reserves. And normally a bank wouldn't lend to you because they're going, hang on, you can't service your loan. Um, what the government's doing is saying, hang on, this is the time they need the money. This is when they need it as working capital. We'll back the, we'll back small businesses and we'll, we'll secure half that loan with the bank. So um, they're probably the main ones um, that are out there. Um, but I think my, my overarching advice to anybody that's out there is if you're an employee get on the front foot talk to your and talk to your teams talk to your bosses find out what their plans are and if you are a business owner you can't communicate enough with your team get a plan in place and cash is king that's perfect thanks so much for that matt um oh, sorry, no, Fran, before you move on there was just another question that came through are we able to claim income protection for this time if i'm a director of my company with currently no employees? One would hope you can. Um, we, would, we would all, anybody that's got insurances and are dealing with insurance companies at the moment will find that they're running for the hills. Um, and yeah, you try, try and claim some travel insurance back. I mean, I, I was supposed to be going to Bali in a few weeks, but that ain't happening. And, uh, and, and lo and behold, there's clauses in travel insurance that won't pay it out. Um, but I, I would be on your front foot to your broker, um, speak to who your insurance provider is and get on it ASAP because there might be some loopholes you need to get through. Um, I think any insurance that you're looking to enact, which is no different to my advice of that, get on the front foot with your banks, is don't leave it for two or three weeks, call them now. Perfect. Um, um, we just had another question as well, just come through just quickly before we get Dave off as well from Claire about um, they've activated their BCP at work. Um, they look after a team of 21. Some are over the moon, the moon that they can work from home. Others are really struggling with the thought um, of being at home by themselves, providing as much support as, uh, as multiple communication options and counselling. What else can we do to reassure the team members that they will not be isolated working from home? Like, yeah, I think... Yeah, I mean, I, I, I can only tell you what we're doing here. Um, so, uh, we obviously, we're all starting to work from home tomorrow. What we'll be doing is uh, 9 o'clock every morning, 4 o'clock every afternoon. Anybody that's online, we, we use Teams. There'll be a, a quick, everybody on it, quick whip around. How's everybody going? What's going on? 
what issues do you have? What do you need IT to sort out for you? But we're even going to make some fun out of it. You know, we, we normally do a, uh, a pub lunch. So um, grab your lunch out of, the, out of the kitchen and we'll all sit here and have a pub lunch on a Thursday or a Friday. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and we normally yeah, do Friday. I like what you said about the, even with the coffees and all that sort of stuff as well. And I think people do, you need to, like, people are sort of a bit scared to crack jokes or whatever these sort of times. But I think you need to, you need to keep it light, light-hearted and, and even like Dave was touching on before about those memes going around and... You do, you need to, you know, obviously it's a serious sort of issue as well. We don't need to take ourselves seriously. Let's still keep that sense of humour that we've got and ride it through these times as well. So Katie's still trying to find hers. Um, well, but... I was about to say, Riley, you wanted to wear your shirt off in this webinar. You wanted to take it off. So I... I... I'm ready. No. <laughs> it, might, it might scare a few away, but... Um, we might be better off getting Dave to do that. <laughs> um... Yeah, no, that's, that's true. And I think, yeah, just having those different catch-ups as well and, and even, like, um, encouraging your team, Claire, as well, just to, to be communicating with each other as well, just call and text and stir each other up and um, send self or whatever. Just just keep the mood as light as you can. Uh, but I think having those check-ins as much as you can as well. Even I know there are some programs where you can have, like, that live stream of you at work all the time. So, people, obviously, there'd be distraction issues there as well. But... That's that's what I'd sort of say is um, um, yeah, keep it as lighthearted as possible. Make sure you let them know that, that you're accessible. If you're that you are the leader, you're accessible at any time of the day um, to answer any questions that they've got as well. But yeah, you've got to look at doing things a little bit differently and um, you know creating some you know a bit of fun, like even Carpa said with the, the lunches and stuff as well. Just and it could well be that every, at one o'clock every day as well, everyone has lunch together. Um, yeah. Or on a Friday afternoon, you have a virtual beer or a wine or something anyway, or just something. Spot, spot on. Friday, uh, Friday Abo Bebo's at four is uh, what we'll be doing every Friday. So, yeah. you know, I was going to say, you want Sorry, so sort of cut out there a fair bit, Carpo, but I, I, you'd mumble up one beer anyway, I think. Right? So. <laughs> well, let's, let's just say I'll never get excited about winning the FTC 100 Club, but anyway, moving on. <laughs> yeah, we won't go there. <laughs> no, awesome. All right, thanks so much. I'm just mindful of the time as well, guys. But now we've got Dave Power to Bain um, to. Yeah, they Power. Let's go, Dave. What do you got for us? Power. Awesome, guys. So, uh, Power. <laughs> hey, you guys, really appreciate being, being on here and. Um, you know, the, uh, the main thing that I've been working on for years now, and if a lot, of, a lot of people don't know me, I've been traveling around for 13 years, we're helping people for they eat, think, and do, the environment they're in, and the choices they make. And so the whole reason why I do what I do is to inspire people in tough, challenging times is to make the choices that are going to help them long term. And right now in this current situation where we're, po we're, we're at will to this environmental thing that we can't control, the one thing we can control is ourselves, our mind, the choices we do make on a daily basis. So right now we need to have a bit of a, a bit of a mindset shift where, you know, right now we're in this shift position, it's chaotic and a lot of changes and all that sort of stuff, but we need to have a bit more of a longer mindset. With it. So we can be a little bit where the whole pressure on our shoulders right now, it can be very overwhelming. And I guarantee anyone right now who's been watching the bloody news and all that sort of stuff, it's very, very overwhelming. And so what I want to talk to you about now is to understand the way your mind works. And I'm going to give you some little uh, mental visuals to think about. And I want you guys to think about with your energy concept, uh, your, with your energy right now, you've got your body, you've got your physical, you've got your emotional, your mental, and also your spiritual energy. Now, I'm not going to get all, all religious on you or anything like that. But what I will work on is helping you know where to put your energy and focus during these times because it really does matter because i guarantee if you're being sucked into the tv right now watching everything doom and gloom and switching from channel to iphone and all that kind of stuff you're going to be drained and basically by the time you go to bed you might be staring at the fucking roof and you're going hey i can't sleep i've got the kids out i'm shitting myself and i guarantee your your uh, you know just like riley says your energy is contagious or calmness is contagious um, sorry, I, I, I ruined my line there. Your energy is contagious and you want to be strong in these times for your kids, for your team, and also for yourself in that sense. And just back yourself up and go, hey, I fucking got this. So you might not be able to high-five your team people, but what you can do is give yourself a high-five. 
uh, right now and then, and then use, use this on your hands after it. So oh. I want you to think about this with your mind. Every single day that you wake up, you have the opportunity to sit there and dwell and be miserable and to fucking think of the absolute worst and all that kind of stuff. You do have that choice. But in regards to that, um, you know, I'm a big believer is, is uh, you know, we can, like, I want you to be able to feel it, have that little pity party and go, oh, fuck, you know, why does this have to happen, blah, blah, blah. But right now, you uh, spending, spending more time than you need to in those moments isn't going to fucking serve you or anyone. So you're going to understand that in those times, if you do get in that point, I want you to snap your fingers or snap yourself out. There's a little technique you can use in two words and cancel that. And I want you to remember that anytime your mind starts to get away on you and all sorts of stuff, you go cancel that. Um, you know, and, and, and this is the thing that I do with the kids books and we're power man. Power man is a character. It's not me. Power man is a character that I built for myself in tough, challenging times that I would ask myself, what the fuck would power man do in this situation? Because power man always knows what to fucking do. And he always steps up. He always rises above. He creates a, 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 a like that's kind of, what is called the alter ego effect. And that's what used by the, some of the biggest CEOs in the world, Olympian athletes and all that kind of stuff. So anyone out there who, you know, I haven't met you or any of that. My real name is not Dave Powell Tobane. It's David John Henry Colt Tobane after my great grandfather from World War II. But Dave Powell Tobane was something that I created to step up in these challenging times when I was in business, when I started at 17 and when I was going through things, you know, of uh, my, you know, a lot of the things that I do right now, the challenges created because I saw my parents struggle uh, due to financial stress, um, you know, uh, unhealthy eating habits and thinking habits and all this kind of stuff. And I decided that when I was a kid, I am going to be the one that changes this sort of stuff. So when it comes to generational stress, I'm not sure if anyone on here, I'm pretty guaranteed that everyone in here with their family, um, they're, they've, they've taken on a lot of conditioning from them and thinking patterns or behavior and all that sort of stuff. And I guarantee you, everyone on here, at one point when they were growing up, they're like, "Hey, when I'm when I grow up, I'm going to be different." And and crazy enough, when we do grow up, sometimes we've got to snap ourselves out and go, "Holy shit, I'm turning to my parents, I'm turning to my father or my mom or my grandparents, whatever it is." But we have these moments, so um, it's good to have these moments and of realization. Go, "Hey, no, I, I do want to change. What I want to change to." And, and that's all that cancel that sort of technique can do because we're all going to get caught up in different times. But I want you to talk to you about the refractory period. The refractory period, what I was saying before, is the time spent dwelling, the time spent off the track, whatever it is. The goal with all of this, with anything, when it comes to your fitness, your nutrition, your business, whatever it is, is minimizing the downtime, minimizing the off period where you're spent putting your energy and putting your time, putting your focus on things that will not help you putting your time into the pity party, whatever it is. So it's not a bad thing to fall off. We're all going to fall off. We're not perfect. Thinking that we are is being unrealistic. It's getting back on quicker. So the more you can redirect yourself and put yourself back on as well as your team to focus on what you can control, the better you will be, especially in this time uh, at the moment. So when it comes to your energy, a big one, like, you know, Riley's talking about with working at home and all that sort of stuff is having some structure that you can stick to. And the big thing about it as well is lowering your expectations to what it's going to be like. Because a lot of times we get disappointed because we expect too much or we expect it was going to be different. So the more you expect it to be different than what it is, the more disappointed you'll be in the moment. So the more you, hey, this is fucking, it's like the whole world is in it like this. Everyone, even in Japan, in flooding Holland, in everywhere, Bali, wherever it is, everyone is in the same boat. So what we got to do is understand that's the environment, that's the rules, that's the game. Let's play the rules. It's just like, um, it, yeah, anyway, that, I think you guys get that point right now. So accept the current situation and how it is. Understand that every single day that it's going to change. All you can do is adapt and change fast and deal with it. And so a big point of that is once you expect it to be changing, you're not going to get upset by it. You're going to go, hey, this is, this is how it is today. These are the new rules. Let's play. Now, the big thing about that is it's happening every single day. But the better you get at this and the more you can forward plan and keep a calm mind with regards to this is you can be one or two weeks ahead of everyone else. So right now, one thing that I've done is I've reached out to my American friends, my friends in Holland and my friends in Italy that have actually updating me on what it's like 30 days from now, 15 days from now. So I'm getting the feedback from them and they're telling me the extreme measures, what they're having to do. So I'm getting frontline information straight to now and I'm pre-planning before. 
And this has allowed me, two weeks ago, I lost 95% of my income, all my streams, all my businesses, the school business, the libraries, I had 2020 set up massively, all turned off, you know, and I've still got bills to pay and that's the sense. So in regards to that is like, okay, I've got to adapt, I've got to do this. And so a big thing right now is, is with your mind is I want you to think about it is, is your mind a bucket where you're protective of your energy or is it a sieve and you're letting it seep everywhere. You're letting it go into Instagram, into social media, into negative talking and bitching about what we're going to do or whatever it is or talking about someone else, and, you know, all this kind of stuff. And when I talk about it being a bucket is I want you to think about it in a way where you're actually consciously, uh, you know, uh, cradling and channeling your energy into, into, uh, or keeping it within you in that sense. Now, a lot of people in today's world is actually have a bucket, but it, they've got a lid on it because they're not open to anything. And that's a pressure cooker because the moment the pressure comes in, it's going to fucking explode. So you've got to have a bit of an open mind in this moment. That's the best thing to sort of do and be open to change. And the big thing about a lot of people who have a closed off kind of mind or, or in regards to that is, um, this is the crazy thing is the more garbage that goes into it, Garbage in doesn't equal garbage out. Garbage in, garbage stays and it stinks and it rots. And, and that's where people just spiral down and become all negative sort of stuff. So open up your bucket, protect it, fill up the holes right now if you're letting your, drain, your energy drain out to things that won't help, help you or save you right now or serve you. And, um, and start to fill the good tap up. And the big thing in regards to this, and you guys are on here, which is incredible. You're out there trying to seek more information. You're connecting yourself to this network, especially in a regional town. Because the community you guys have right now is the most powerful thing you can have. You all can learn what's with uh, collective learning, where you're not just learning at your own rate, you're learning at everyone else's rate, which is incredible. So the more you guys can do this and work on developing a solution-based mindset in, in yourself, you start to focus your energy on solutions. Now, everyone right here has created solutions for your business, for your family, for yourself, uh, for your future. Now, this is where you can get creative and start sharing them. And start sharing your solutions rather than your problems. Because the more we focus on the problem, we can get stuck there. So it is good to see the problem, be aware of the problem, but spend 80% of your energy fixing the problem or getting answers. Which then leads me to one of the greatest tactics that you can do right now is be quick to ask for help. Don't wait for three weeks, uh, like Maddie was talking about, where you start to ask for help from your bank, whatever it is, is ask for help now. Actively seek out everything that you need help with right now forward think what would i need in regards to this what would i need in regards to this and start finding a way and, and even put together a worst case scenario like i've got a worst case scenario where i move back home to leeton and i go and work for my supermarket friend frankie Fumara, who owns iga in leeton that was the first job i ever had and i and the great thing is i, I fucking loved it so i was like hey if the worst i'm going to do is i'm going to go back and start packing shelves at IGA and live with my parents. Hey, what a great time to reconnect with where I'm from. What a great time to spend time with my family, especially under duress, which brings us close together. So a big thing is if you create that worst kind of plan is start to be okay with it and go, hey, if that happens, it happens. I'm gonna accept it. The thing is money can come and go, but my relationships, my health, my well-being, that's really important right now. So. Uh, now, that doesn't mean you, you be uh, delirious around losing your materials or your money or whatever it is. Do it as best you can. But at the end of the day, as long as your heart, your family and their bed, you're going to be bloody happy and you're going to make the most out of this situation. So in, re in regards to that is, um, you know, tip one there is the big tactic is ask for help fast. Actively think how you might need help in the future and start lining up now. Start aligning and creating your allies, your community, your network, the people you surround yourself with. Have people that are focused on solution base. That's really important. So start building your team. That's really important. Ask for help. Um, now, the other one is have hard conversations. Be open to having hard conversations and understand we're all in this together. And the more you can face those conversations straight on and tell it how it is and go through it and understand that you're having a conversation because you care not because you don't care. And then in that point right there is you can actually start to have a bit of a heart to heart conversation. And, um, you know, people are going to appreciate you doing that now straight up rather than in three weeks or whatever it is, or, or holding on to it. Cause that's going to cause a lot of stress. Now, um, the, the next one I want to talk about is choosing to respond rather than react. 
because right now if we get triggered by all these sort of things and we react just like in my kids books around bullying where the kid cannot control the external bully that enforces uh you know a um a not desirable sort of situation on the kid who's doing nothing he's just minding his own business right now the bully right now you could say is corona the corona fucking bully so i want to say is how are you going to respond to it versus react to it because if you react and you fucking fly off the, off the handle you fucking get stressed out you get angry at everyone you, you triggered and you know home life working from home is like a fucking war zone yes. you've got to take some responsibility being created this i brought this energy home i taught my family like this Big thing you can do at home is still get dressed in your work uniform when it's time to, and then take those clothes off when it's time to play with the kids. Right? It's very important to segregate that sort of stuff or create a work room where this is your work room and you've got a space for it. And when dad's in that work or mum's in that work room, you know that that's where they've got to do the thing. So create these rules and boundaries and all that and spaces so you can actually, uh, uh, you know, like, how do you say, like, turn on know, know when to turn it on because you now like you used to work and turn it walk it walk into your workplace but now you're walking into your back room or whatever it is mm. and dave what about another just... thing there is to understand when we talk about yeah sorry mate yeah. No, i was just gonna yeah obviously you can Go. keep going with that as well but i was gonna say if there are like do you have any or what are your thoughts on things like um or have you got any um suggestions for like meditation apps and, and yoga and breath work. I've discussed breath work in the past and I hope yeah, I'll just if you can touch on that too, that'd be super, mate. Yeah, hundred percent. I'm getting now I'm just finishing off in this one. Is um yeah, I'll get I'll give you resources. So everyone's gonna get meditation apps, resources, how to control your breathing, how to how to also look after your vagus nerve, which is what triggers your fight, flight or freeze mode. Because a lot of people right now are like a deer on a highway and the car's coming directly at them with the headlights and they're frozen. And then the cortisol, stress response, all these things fire off in the body and it clouds up the mind. You don't have that clarity in regards to that. So I teach you these ways to reconnect with yourself, get your mind and your, and your heart aligned in that sense. So you can actually think clearly and calmly. So, um, and this is on this point right now is your mental health is controlled by your internal world, not so much your external world. Your external world can trigger it in that sense. But all that's really revealing is your inner world, your inability to deal with certain situations. Now, the more experience, and this is what they call like a, you know, a general in the army that's uh, battle tested. What they mean by battle tested is they've done it, they've, 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 ex they've felt that pressure and they know that that's normal, right? So the more that you actually stress the muscle or the body, the more you stress it and then you recover from it, the better you get. And, and what happens is, that's called wisdom when you remove the emotional trigger from it. So a lot of people from this can go down the negative say and be triggered by it and say, it was the worst time in my life. It was crazy. I lost everything. Their heart's still beating. They're still living. And so really important thing with that, that if that's still bloody kicking, you're still in the game. So you may lose all this sort of stuff, but if you're still in the game, you go, I can make it twice. You have that attitude to come back with ferocious and use this as fuel rather mm. than fear for the rest of your life. Um, you can bounce back from anything and not only bounce back, bounce back stronger. You know, they talk about in America, if you're a serious business guy, you've been bankrupt four times. And that's quite extreme, but yeah. you can even look into like Walt Disney. He was bankrupt a couple of times and all that sort of stuff. So, um, so we got so, understand your thoughts, your yeah. visions in regards to that sort of stuff. You got me now? Yep. Now. All right, so I've got some resources for you, uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza. That's going to talk about your mind, your thoughts, and the, and how that plays out. And um, so you're going to get that's gold. Like that's one of the best uh, uh, videos to watch on your mind, uh, which is really really good. I'm going to put an app in there too for uh, meditation, which is a uh, one giant mind. You can just do a 20 minute meditation. It tells you how to do everything from go to woe, um, and what that basically does. You I'll tell you this word is aham. You say that word over and over again, and what actually happens is your brain gets fixated on that word, and it forgets about all the external environment. You actually sort of zen out for a bit. Now, the more you do that and you get into a deeper state, your body releases stress. 
And so what happens is you have all these random thoughts pop in and they're all subconscious things that have been stressing you almost like a computer that's loaded up with too much on it. And it's just, it's operating slow. So if you find that your mind is operating slow, instead of slamming it, instead of expecting it to work faster or, you know, pressing the buttons quicker, that little 20 minute meditation can deload yourself to reload yourself. Right. Mm -hmm. And so the big thing is that's a great way to mix up your day. It's a great way to start your day and finish the day to deload. And, um, and, and also too, it's, it's great way that when you, and if anyone right now, regardless of what your situation is, if you work on getting solid sleep, you're going to be in a better situation to handle anything. So really protect your sleep. That's the main one. And, um, and guys, I want to finish off because I've, I've got uh, these resources and you'll see about, uh, I put in there about your vagus nerve. That's a nervous system that controls your stress uh, release, uh, stress response in the body is uh, there is little techniques. Now, this may sound crazy to begin with, but humming calms your nervous system. Uh, singing calms your nervous system. Laughing calms, calms your nervous system. So as you, as you go through all this, that's why um, right now means are so big because we, we, laughing is actually right now is one of the best things you can do, not to, not to, be, um, not to write off what's happening, but to go, hey, like I, I say it is like laughing in the face of adversity in that sense and going, I'm okay with it. You know, and uh, I love, um, you know, the Gladiator movie where he, uh, he, he says something about, um, you know, something about death, death's looking at him and, and he just smiles back at it. You know, and uh, I use these movies and stuff like that. To, you know, you go, I'm okay with that. You know, so the more that they're the little things that I, I look up for inspiration, all that kind of stuff. So um, to finish off there, guys, the more you can develop that solution-based mindset that I've talked about before, um, ask for help and get, and, you know, and reach out to people, you'll be blown away by how many people will want to help you in this moment. So always reach out for help. It's the best tactic you can do and um, start to look into things you can master, skills you can build um, right now because I want everyone right now to understand this will pass and you want to be ready. You want to be ready like a rocket ship, ready to blast off. And just because the, right now this is like a pressure on you and maybe it's reminding you of all the things you didn't do and all the things you said, I'll do this one day and I never did. And then times like this come around and go, all right, it's fucking on. I'm, I'm, I'm never going to, I'm never going to be in this situation again. I'm going to, I'm going to come back and I'm going to come back 10 times stronger, 10 times faster, 10 times better. And also, 10 million times more grateful for the good shit we do have because exactly. being grateful for what you do have and the time you have is really important. I was actually going to go to the gym on Monday, but obviously <laughs> that didn't work out. Hey, hey, that's it. Check this out. If anyone's on here right now, I've been uh, building businesses online and helping people convert to online all week. And if anyone here has a team and they're wondering about what kind of things they can do as a team, uh, if they want me to run a work, a 15 minute home, home workout, they can do, you can yeah, uh, log me in. Yeah. I'll take them for a little workout, all that sort of stuff. Reach out about that. I've got online training programs and, and communities that can jump in and have me I, every day. I do live workouts for everyone. Just check in on everyone. Um, mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. We'll put all those links in there too. And, um, yeah, more than happy to help out for anyone on here. Cool. No, that's awesome. Thanks, Dave. You're a legend. And, and I probably didn't give him a, um, I guess I didn't give you the right, I'm lost for words at the moment. Um, so Dave is a three, is it three times Kettlebell World Champion as well? Yeah, yeah, three, three, he, three times. Yeah, so he does know what he's talking about in regards to, to fitness and obviously mindset as well. Um, yeah, so it, it's always some great takeaways from Dave as well. And no, even to touch on the time. meditation aspect. Like I've been um, writing to Joe Despin, Dr. Joe Despinder as well for the last year. And the, he, the meditations that they have are phenomenal. And you can buy them on his website as well. They're about $14 a hit, I think, anyway. But they, they're a game changer. Um, and even like the likes of yoga, and I think we, like Katie touched on it before with Beck Layton. Um, so follow her on her Instagram and Facebook as well. She's doing live yoga sessions. I've been doing that for the last probably three to six months, like probably three times a week yoga. And it's... Yeah, the, the change in, I guess, just calmness and being able to manage anxiety and things like that has been phenomenal too. So use all, use all those different things and use this as, as a time to start. If you're a bit sceptical about it or you just don't think it's for you, like give it a crack. I can near guarantee you'll come out of this with a different mindset on it. Um, but 
But yeah, I think, and, and lastly as well, like that laughter is, it's a huge thing. And I've been trying to get Katie to laugh for the last four years and um, <laughs> she's done to smile a little bit. So it's unreal. <laughs> but, um, and my, for it, like these wrinkles are starting to go down. I think isolation is good for me. Even my hair looks <laughs> yeah. a bit better on here. Um, hey, no, but thought, everyone, yeah, have a good laugh. Don't take yourself too seriously. Thanks so much for uh, Matt from Navigate and Dave Powell to be. Um, Thanks, guys. Yeah, we appreciate it. Thank you very much, guys. But Thanks, everyone. Yeah, if you've got any questions for us in regards to recruitment or you need someone to look over your CV, your LinkedIn uh, profile, anything like that, sitting out to Katie and myself. Obviously, we've got a lot more time on our hands now as well, but we are more than happy to have any you know, conversations with anyone at all. Um, so, yeah, again, thank you so much. We really appreciate it and hopefully you got a little bit out of it. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thanks. See you, guys. Thanks, Thanks. Thanks.